Uh, thanks all for joining. Uh, this particular app sample that we are going to be discussing is something that I have heard from a lot of customers, a lot of partners out there. And interestingly enough, this is inspired based on an app that we have been using internally as well. The app is, we have named it as a document manager. It's, it's a repository or asset management system. Uh, the business problem or the, uh, the business case that we are working with is uh, basically we have uh, multiple teams working together, collaborating together, and each of us create uh, decks. We create uh, different files, assets uh, that are useful across everyone, but we create in silos and, uh, and, and we have our own locations where we used to store it. And uh, we, uh, collab uh, we collaborated and brought it all together into a SharePoint library. Still, there is a need for an effective way for us to search those assets uh, from within Teams itself or within a place where we are working and having conversations. So there, is, there needs to be a way where we can effectively search and find these assets that are uploaded in the SharePoint document library. That's one business problem that we wanted to solve. The second one is uh, it's good that if I can search and find an asset that I'm looking for, say I'm preparing for a, a customer meeting regarding uh, adaptive cards. I wanted to have an adaptive cards pitch deck and I, I'm able to uh, search it and find it. Uh, and I'm able to consume it myself. That's awesome. Now, next day, a colleague of mine wants to uh, uh, wants help on the same topic. How do I easily share something that I have already known, a very good asset that I already know, and I want to share it, uh, share the goodness with the rest of the folks on my team, right? Uh, we want to have like an easy way to do that as well. That's the second business problem or the second use case that we wanted to solve for. Uh, the third one is uh, more on the contributing back to the asset library. So far, we have been talking about this one huge repository of SharePoint document library where we have all the assets that we have all been consuming the good resources for. Now, how do we contribute assets back to the library without leaving the context of where we are working? Uh, how, how do you make that particular process easier? Because that's definitely a friction point for users, right? Uh, people create really good assets and they would want to contribute back to the community, but the friction point of making it easier for them will definitely increase the uh, rate of contribution back to the asset library. So that's something that we really, really wanted to solve. And that's another business case that we have solved using the sample app. The last part, while it is good for the entire community to contribute back to the asset repository that we have, there needs to be some checks and balances, some uh, uh, owner, a repository uh, authority who would be able to go through these assets, uh, do a say a quality check, review the assets to make sure it adheres to certain standards. A governance part comes into play. So how do you make sure this governance is made easy is the last uh, uh, use case that we wanted to solve for. So these are the four principles around which this document management app is uh, centered around. And let's see how this app uh, solves these uh, business problems, right? Now, uh, here is a way where we have uh, we have used made use of messaging extensions. I'm, I'm sure you all uh, know about messaging extensions to uh, search for an asset which is in the document library and share it easily with users. So in this particular case, you see there is one person who is on the left side of the screen, SR, and there is another person on the right side, OB, uh, Olo, Olo's account, and this is Satya's account, my account over here. So Satya is asking Olo if you have any assets on sales pitch that I can look at for an upcoming customer meeting, and Olo is able to quickly drop the messaging extension for the document manager and search for assets in this manner and uh, able to share it as an adaptive card uh, in the in the in the one-on-one -on -one chat itself. And by nature of messaging extension, this would work in group chat, this will work in channel, uh, uh, it would work in any place wherever it is involved. So by just bringing up a messaging extension, you have a way to query a backend SharePoint document library. Imagine this happening without this app, right? Uh, Olo would probably go to a SharePoint document library, uh, fetch through those, uh, fish through those assets, uh, copy a link of the document, and then paste it back over here. All of that is slightly made uh, easier in this particular process. The next part, like I mentioned, is probably like the contributing back to the asset library or contributing back to the repository. That's what you see over here. And uh, what you have here is again uh, a different user, Satya on the left side and Olo on the right side. Uh, Satya has uh, found uh, basically like I found a particular asset really useful. I have created that and I would really like to share it back to the repository. 
again from the same messaging extension right you have an action command where you'd be able to bring up a task module and uh, have a set of like uh, uh, preliminary fields that you want to fill in and upload an asset basically like upload a file that you want to share uh, from within this task module and for the purpose of the sample this is a very simple task module that asks just for the name and a very short description but you can make it uh, uh, even more uh, even more you know elaborate have more information metadata that you can get uh, around this particular uh, document and that can be used for routing it to the right person right so after submitting what happens as you can see uh, is uh, after routing what happens is let me see yeah as you can see, uh, once this document is submitted, you have an adaptive card that's get that gets posted. On the right side, since this is a person who is uh, approving the asset, right? Olo Brockos is someone who is an approver of this particular SharePoint document. I believe this is the governance piece that we talked about. This particular person would be able to see approve and reject buttons. Basically has additional controls, a user specific views on an adaptive card. Whereas for uh, for the person who submitted the document, uh, the same adaptive card just shows the view as an uh, option. So in this way, you, know, you make use of a single channel, and this view uh, is different for based on the role or the user who is seeing the adaptive card. And this automatically happens. As soon as the card is posted, it refreshes, understands who is viewing that particular card, and changes based on uh, the, uh, the user who is viewing that particular card and allows extra special actions for that particular user. This is the user specific views that was uh, recently released uh, by Adaptive Cards team and was covered in Build and it, I think it was covered in the previous community calls as well. So I wouldn't go uh, 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 more in depth on that, but this is something that we have implemented in this sample app that's up to you for uh, taking up and using it in your own, sample, in your own uh, apps with customers. Now, in the previous task module that he had seen, you could uh, you could actually fetch more detail around the metadata of a document and route it to different owners depending on the type of document. If it's uh, around, say, a retail industry, it should go to one particular owner. If it's in a professional services industry, it should go to another particular owner. In this way, you could have this simple sample app extended and made more uh, part, uh, more specific to particular business requirements and build on top of this. Now, the same way as the adaptive card has been submitted on both sides, the approval would also work in a very similar manner, where this particular person, the approver who has uh, the approval rights, would be able to approve or reject the asset. Uh, definitely, they would want to view the asset and go through the document before approving, so that can also be done directly from within Teams. And once this uh, document is approved, if you can see the card will update, uh, it will automatically refresh on both sides. So you can see the uh, card is showing approved on the Olo side and for the person who has submitted as well. And since this is being submitted in a channel where other users might also be present, uh, all of the users will also be able to see that this particular card has been approved and uh, they would be able to consume the uh, particular asset and uh, they would be able to share it across with their colleagues if they found it useful. So this is a simple workflow of uh, having a, a really good uh, asset that's been submitted back to the document library and having a governance angle also included into it. In terms of implementation, uh, I would request Arun to walk through how we linked the messaging extension to, uh, to the SharePoint document library. Uh, Conceptually, this makes use of a staging folder in the SharePoint library where an intermediary uh, space is uh, allocated for the documents which are kind of, which are under review. And then once approved, it, it goes through the final uh, destination in the library which from which it can be queried and shared across. Aaron? Yeah, before going to that such commands or a message extension, I just want to highlight why we implemented that approve concept where up uploading the files. So in our previous example or in a previous sample or a B2C board, we have not implemented that uh, approve file concept. So someone in the community asked how, what is the security reason? How can they upload it? That's why you know, using adaptive card, we implemented this approve concept. So before uploading into my main folder, we created one staging folder in that. So whatever the staging folder available, that is all pending for approval. So once approver will approve it, then it will go to the main folder. So I just want to highlight that because in our my last sample in a B2C bot, we have not implemented that functionality. 
Now coming back to the such commands or such uh, docs using a message extension. Uh, as such as said, we have a two uh, folders. One is a staging folder and another one is a approved folder. So once a approver approved that, then automatically, you know, it will go to the main folder. From that main folder, using message extensions, uh, such action commands, we are able to re we are able to search that particular uh, doc from the document section from the folder section and we can able to share as an adaptive card. So this is the document where we we used it uh, for that uh, su searching for a message extension. And uh, for uploading and uh, for uploading a docs or for uploading a files, like uh, as I explained in a in my previous example or a previous sample, we used a upload graph APS. So using upload folder graph APS, we can able to upload the files and uh, using this such message commands, we can able to search the files and the sections also, uh, text also using message extension such commands. Yeah. Thanks, Arun. Uh, we uh, the user specific views that I uh, that I referred to earlier from adaptive cards is available in this documentation. I will share it across. This is covered extensively in the last community call as well, so I wouldn't go uh, deep into this. Uh, uh, what uh, what other part that didn't quite come out in the demo video because we had side by side screens is we have also made use of full width adaptive cards. While it's a small announcement, but still it's it's a very good uh, uh, UI piece that I, I really like about this. Uh, basically, if you have more than uh, three buttons in an adaptive card, right, it becomes it can become crowded. So full width adaptive cards to the rescue, and and implementing this is extremely easy. You need to have an MS Teams width full for an adaptive card in 1.2, and you would have a, a, all the power of a full-width adaptive card. So that's something that uh, I wanted to highlight as well. Finally, uh, just uh, this is a sample app that is a bare bones framework, right? This is not like a full-fledged app itself. Uh, this is something that you can potentially extend for use cases scenarios in multiple different industries. And that's what we have in the slide over here. And this is based on my interaction with customers across in different industries. I've gathered this, this is definitely list you can use the sample app and extend it to for many other purposes as well in a professional services industry which is probably the most straightforward one uh, 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 we you can share uh, assets like uh, client proposals templates pitch decks between different teams if a, if a particular person is preparing for a pitch for a particular customer in an industry they would have uh, uh, you can you can even have like tag based search in the messaging extension uh, and and be able to search say pitch and it will pitch plus retail and it will show like uh, pitch documents for retail industry customers so you can customize it in that manner so it will be more useful for professional services industry customers in finance and banking, think of this as a way where you can have a knowledge repository for brochures, policy assets, like banking products, right? Like what kind of discounts, like what kind of uh, banking products that you can send to customers, uh, uh, say insurance contracts, documents that uh, relationship managers might want to quickly search, get and share it with the customer is something that you can build using this. Uh, in healthcare, and this is a very interesting twist to what we built, is, and this is something that I heard from a customer as well. Doctors frequently search for information about uh, drugs, diseases, uh, uh, to learn more about it, and also share that information across other doctors who, who, who comes for a second opinion. So this messaging extension need not be looked from the lens of an asset repository alone. It can even serve as a repository for uh, all this information around drugs and diseases, SOP documents. Uh, uh, um, all of this can be uh, customized in order to suit the healthcare industry use case as well. And this is a very interesting twist that I found very recently as well. And cross industry, it's very similar to how we have in professional services. Uh, any kind of assets, uh, any kind of like forms that you want to share across with different teammates, different uh, teams, is something that you can make use of this particular sample app. So it's a, it's you're only limited by your imagination on how you extend the sample app and make it as a full-fledged app that can be used for your own customers. That's all from my end. Back to you, Vesa. I will take answers on the chat. Thank you, Satya. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. And, and these samples are really, really, really powerful. They're well done, uh, well documented, and, and awesome scenarios for sure. Mm -hmm.